Let's Spare and the Netflix docuseries actually ended up being a massive own goal for Harry and Meghan. Oh, absolutely. But isn't it wonderful? You know, as the Jamaicans would say, you spit in the sky, it falls in your eye. I think it's absolutely splendid. You know, there they were thinking they were going to roll everybody's corpse all the way to the bank, covered, covering themselves in glory and gold. And it's turned out they've covered themselves in something else, which we won't go into. <laughs> Phil, do you agree? Uh, yes, we won't go into that, Dan, I don't think. Yeah, good evening. I mean, the bubble's burst, hasn't it? I mean, I think even young people in America are starting to sort of latch on to them and realise they're, they're a one-trick pony. And young people have got a pretty low boredom threshold these days, haven't they? And I think they're actually getting bored with them. So these polls are very significant. I think we've known that their popularity has plummeted on this side, but for it to do so on the Atlantic, on the other side of the Atlantic as well, my worry is that uh, they might realise this and try to sort of get back into the royal family via the back door, perhaps try and do some work in the Commonwealth. And that is a bit of a worry. We'll end up with a situation where they're half in and half out, which, of course, is what the Queen tried to avoid. So I do fear that uh, King Charles does have to put his foot down. Otherwise, they might try and sneak back in. Well, ADC, that is a genuine concern now, isn't it? Especially seeing that there seem to be a lot of people around King Charles who want him to have some sort of reconciliation meeting with Harry and Meghan before the coronation. Well... Shall I tell you, I'm not entirely convinced that that's not just a fig leaf to cover for the fact that really the King and the Prince of Wales understand what they're dealing with and simply are trying to do it in as decorous a way as possible to avoid uh, a, a backlash from Harry and Meghan's supporters or create supporters for Harry and Meghan where none exist. I actually do not think that uh, my understanding is that, that Charles and William are a lot less gullible and a lot less malleable. And remember, Harry is the one who has flown the kite of you know, we'll do some work possibly in the Commonwealth. I mean, I have to tell you, I know from various high Commonwealth high commissioners, they don't want Harry anywhere near them after the trouble he's caused with those lies about racism in the royal family, because it's caused no end of problems in their countries. And they don't want Harry and Meghan anywhere near them. But this is Harry and Meghan yet again proposing something that they hope will get them half in, half out. I don't yeah. think it's going to happen. Well, it better not happen. Uh, now, look, Harry slammed Jeremy Clarkson as a misogynist this week over a column on Meghan. But I wanted to play you both his own barrage of attacks on women in his shameful new book. Listen to this. Unlike the other matrons, Pat wasn't hot. Pat was cold. Pat was small. Walking was hard. Stairs were torture. She'd descend backwards, glacially. Often we'd stand on the landing below her doing antic dances, making faces. Do I need to say which boy did this with the most enthusiasm? We went on mocking her as she came down the stairs. Who the hell is this editor? Loathsome toad, I gathered. Everyone who knew her was in full agreement that she was an infected pustule on the arse of humanity, plus an excuse for a journalist. I mean, Lady C, pot kettle, uh... I think Harry is pretty uh, cocky, you might say, or pretty hypocritical to criticise Clarkson, given the way that he speaks about women. Well, you know, Jeremy Clarkson actually was not being misogynistic. He was making an allusion to a popular mm. series called Game of Thrones. So let's put that in its correct context. While Harry, That's important. Okay, he was young at the time, but I have to tell you, I've I've been around children all my life. Some children are cruel and others aren't. You know, there is no way that I, any child I would regard as desirable would be mocking a, some, a, a matron who had scoliosis. Also, what is so insensitive about Harry's comment is that his cousin Eugenie had scoliosis. And, you know, so it you know, it, it's, it cuts very close to the bone and it shows that Harry 
really has no control over his mouth or indeed being a decent person. I think it's outrageous. He is abusive. Harry is very abusive. I don't think there's any way that you can compare Clarkson's allusion to Game of Thrones. If it was cack-handed, he should have mentioned that it was an illusion. He didn't, but that's an omission. Harry has admissions, and they are admissions of somebody who is cruel and unfeeling. And I'm afraid you don't develop feelings as you get older. You're either born with a heart or without one. That's my take on it. I mean, Phil, you have to admit there is a... Uh... A real hypocrisy for Harry to constantly talk about compassion and the fact that his life's work is all about being kind uh, when the book is just full of bile and attacks on people who he doesn't like. It's yet more hypocrisy, isn't it? Just with the racism around when he was the racist, now he's the misogynist. It's, it's horrible. It's violent language. What I don't like is the way he uses nicknames for people. He doesn't actually name people. Mm. He just refers to them by, by these horrible names. It's, it's really sort of school bullying yes. stuff, isn't it? I'm That's the sad bad. little man, Phil. I'm the sad little man. <laughs> what, you're, 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 you're not the darling. <laughs> I, like, I don't think I'm, but quite a few other journalists are, and it's it's just very, very unpleasant, and it shows a really nasty streak that he's got, I'm afraid. Yeah, no, personally, I think it's a compliment, because uh, if Harry likes you, uh, you're usually a pretty bad person. That's what I've worked out over the past uh, few years. Uh, look, fascinating analysis as ever. Lady Colin Campbell and Phil Dampier, top royal authors, and our royal masterminds, they're back next week. 